Hello family, it's Ariana, your tarot life coach, bringing you your August 2022 tarot scopes. Big, big hugs, lots and lots of love, high fives, and some damn dirty shoulder rubs. How are you doing? What's going on and what's new? So if you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. And if you're already a family member, you already know what's up, all right? So the way these videos are broken down is we'll talk a little bit astrologically what's going on. Then we'll go into an intro with an oracle read and we'll finish it up with uh, individual signs, all right? Now, everything will be timestamped. So if you don't wanna listen to it all, just click on the part you wanna hear, all right? And then you can always come back to it. Now, let's talk about what's going on in the heavens. So August 4th, Mercury enters into Virgo. This is gonna give us a time to pay attention to the details, pay attention to what we're saying. We're really looking at what's going on. Do our actions match our actions? Now, on the 10th, a very important day very important day this is dr love's seventh birthday yes she is turning seven guys she has grown so much <laughs> over the years so be sure to wish her a happy birthday especially on instagram now on the 11th we have a full moon in aquarius 19 degrees okay 19 comes down to a 10 10 comes down to a one this is a new beginning things are changing we see things and we want these changes now okay now it's going to be conjunct saturn so it's going to be right next to saturn but it's going to be making a square with uranus and mars what does the square mean this means that we are really trying to break through these restrictions from keeping us from where we want to be this could be on a bigger scale globally talking about maybe with government things of that nature and on a, on a smaller scale what's keeping you back from your dreams your goals and your wishes okay now on the 11th venus enters into leo well hello leos you're gonna be looking extra hella sexy what you're gonna be looking fabulous all right and that means Love's gonna get a little bit more fun. Now, on the 14th, Sun opposes Saturn. There may be some sunlight, okay, being shed on relationships, leadership, and govern, okay, government. So be prepared for revelations, surprises, news breaks, things of that nature, things that might shock and awe you, all right? Now, on the 20th, Mars, the ruler of action and passion, is entering into Gemini. So communication and action, we're gonna we're gonna wanna have more fun now, okay? It's Leo season, it's time for fun. And on the 21st, guys, this is a big day, a huge day. This is my 42nd birthday. Woohoo! <laughs> yes, so be sure to send me lots of birthday love, guys. Now, this is also an important day because Vesta will be going retrograde. It will be entering into Aquarius. It was moving from Pisces into Aquarius, and Ve Vesta is the goddess of spiritual healing, okay? A lot of healing going on. Now, we also have Mercury in opposition of Neptune, so this is going to ma make sure that you're checking the source of communication. Make sure you know what's going on. And on the 22nd, we have a Virgo season. Hey, Virgos, it's your B-Day, all right? It's your season. It's time to get things in order, all right? And on the 24th, we have Uranus going retrograde, 18 degrees, Taurus. Let's look at the number 18, 18 coming down to a nine. Nine saying we need to finish things up, okay? And it's going to be there until the 22nd of January, 2023. Now, I always like to think Uranus is a very stubborn, <laughs> not Uranus, Taurus is a very stubborn um, section. And Uranus is all about rebellion. So this is about breaking through structures, changing, pay attention to the food, pay attention to the money market, guys. Things are going to be shifting. And on the 25th, Mercury enters into Libra. This is great for communication. Teamwork makes the dream work, okay? Okay meeting with friends, having fun, looking extra fabulous. And on the 27th, we have the new moon in Virgo, four degrees, okay? So let's talk about the number four. Four is significant to foundation, the home. Virgo, getting our homes in order, getting our finances in order, getting our life in order before we switch into this new season. All right, so that's what I have for you guys. Another announcement is the only way to book a reading with me is through my link tree, guys. I will not be in your DMs. I will not email you. I will not message you. I am very busy. I work two jobs and have two kids <laughs> and a personal life. So I will not be messaging you to tell you that you need a read. And by the way, I don't use the word beloved. Okay, I say, what's up? Hey, girl, how you doing? I don't say, hello, beloved, from the star child. No, I don't talk like that. So you know it's not me. All right, so if you want to book a reading, hit that link tree, hit me up, follow me on Instagram. We're always going live and having fun. All right, see you in the readings. Hello, water signs. Hi, Cancer. How you doing? Hi, Scorpio. Hi, Pisces. 
How are my cancers doing? I hope you're doing well. Let's start off with your oracle read. We start off with Archangel Raphael. Come in and say, let me heal your heart, babe. I want to take care of you. I want, to, I want you to heal emotionally, spiritually, love-wise. How every one of you, this beautiful healing energy is coming towards you. And I'm paying attention to the number eight on top. The eighth house is ruled by Scorpio, and that's intimacy, other people's money, things that are hidden, you know? This is really working with that energy, all right? Now, using the Star Codes Astro Oracle deck, that's like a damn tongue twister, you have that of Juno and the 11th house coming out. Now, very interesting with Juno because we have the two pairs representing soulmate energy. Juno represents that of um, love and money and partnering and, and, and partnership. All right. And then the 11th house comes out. So maybe you're looking for a partnership that's more of a friendship and your friends are going to help support you through this or help you find the love that you're looking for. All right. Or maybe you're just friends with the person you're in love with. Beautiful, beautiful energy coming through. Now, with that being said, your ancestral message is that of wind, of activation. Your words are powerful this month. Pay attention to how you're using them to move through. This is also about giving energy to what you want and desire. Now, I find it very interesting you have the wind card, and I'm going to use my notes here on this one because I have trouble saying this, because your, your ancestor message from the Nahuali deck is Shi-O-T-U-T-I, okay? And this is the god of fire, okay? So what does fire need? Fire needs air, okay? It needs it to be blown upon. You need to speak words of manifestation onto your actions. This is about your motivation, your craftsmanship. And this is about um, fire being used to change. You're going to really use your solar plexus. What are your motivations? What are your intentions? This is very similar to the fool card, okay? What do you want to start, water signs? Because you got to put your words and your actions to the same place, all right? Now, we're going to do these um, oracles a little bit differently. I use the Promethean deck. The Promethean deck is going to represent your um, masculine energy. And the goddess deck is going to represent your feminine energy. And what your masculine energy wants you to pay attention to is look there's that fire again that fiery energy but it's being present in the here and now a lot of times we're so focused on the future or what happened in the past that we're not really paying attention to what's going on right now and right now is where you have this energy where this fire and this air can meet and then a beautiful beautiful ignition can happen right now, with that, you have the number 31 on top of her, and your partnership was coming through with 31 on the Juno card. So the number 31, 31 could be very important. Now, Mayat, the Egyptian goddess, the goddess of truth, this is saying you've got to be honest about what it is that you truly want in the here and now. What do you want? There's a lot of fiery energy coming in for you, so you could be dealing with a fire sign, or Leo season is just going to be super freaking hot for you, okay? Now, this energy is like be as kind as you can and honest about what it is that you truly want and desire moving forward. And as long as you do so with love, there's nothing to fear, all right? So, oh, and your crystal is rhodochrose. Rodenite. I thought it was rhodochrosite, but it's rhodonite, okay? And this teaches us to look for answers and reduces self-doubt. It builds our confidence and helps us along our journey. Works with our heart chakra, our anahata. It resolves conflict and restores inner peace and balance and teaches love. It promotes peace and love in all aspects, whether personal or in the world. Now, rhodonite was suitable uh, uh, for vibrational patterns. It helps restore balance. It also works with our joints and our lungs. It can help with arthritis and autoimmune disease. Now, on a spiritual level, it talks about taking a step back and being honest. There goes that truth again, being truthful and honest with yourself, okay? What was your role in the conflict, and are you really willing to forgive? This is about patience and seeking forgiveness, okay, in a partnership or in a relationship. Now, remember 3131 is going to be important. We're going to be doing... A yes or no, and I'm using a beautiful deck given to me by my friend Stephanie. Thank you, lady, for letting me have this beautiful deck, the Native Tarot. I'm going to go with these two cards in the center. This is going to be a yes or no question. Let's see what's at the bottom of the deck to guide us, okay? What is the overall energy? We have the lovers. And this is beautiful. You got Juno, which actually represents like your partnership and your marriage in your chart. And also like your Aquarius energy with um, the 11th house. There's a lot of friendships and relationships. You're starting and initiating new things. It's really, really beautiful energy. Okay, let's see what we got going on right now. Okay. 
Yes or no question for card number one. It's a yes. Justice will be served. We're going to move in the right direction. If you chose card number two, I'm going to say it's a no because this is where they're fighting and they're arguing. So there's a situation that needs to be brought under control, okay? The counting coop is where they're trying to keep people under control. It's like a battle. The seven of wands, okay? People are fighting. So you have to pay attention to what you really want and using the energy of the here and now, not the past, not the future, and speaking your truth will help activate your new beginning. All right. So let's look at these cards. Let's see what we got coming in for you. Beautiful water signs. Okay. One more shuffle and then we will go. So we have Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Overall energy is the eight of cups. There is neglect. Something's being neglected emotionally right now. The number eight has been kind of important for you with the eighth house, with the um, Archangel Raphael. So at the bottom of the deck, what do we have going on here? We have simply the foundation, the four of wands. We should be happy. Like it's a yes and we should be happy, but we're like, oh, we're afraid it's not going to work because it didn't work in the past, right? So we get all in our head and we get all defeated. And then our spirit guides coming through like, I got you. Like, what's up, water sign? I got you. We got the victory. There's like a lot of promise of money and cooperation, collaboration going on. There's also something about a trip coming up for you. Oh, where are you going, water sign? Call me. I like to travel. And it's my birthday. We can go on a birthday trip. And you have another angel coming in, but we're not listening to it with the communication. So I do feel like you have like a financial aspect that's really going very well for you, but you're kind of neglecting your emotions. And that is why the here and now is very important. And Mayotte's coming in with the truth. So let's jump into these reads. Hello, Scorpio. How are you doing? You sexy, sexy Scorpio. Let's jump into your read. Eight of Cups, what is this? What are we neglecting? What are we leaving on the foresight? Okay, a little story about this card. Let's talk about this. This is Gilgamesh. He was off trying to go get his little plan, trying to get this, trying to get this energy of life, okay, to live forever. But he neglected his emotions. He had neglected what he was there for, and he lost the opportunity. So pay attention to the things that you are neglecting, whether it's your emotions, maybe you're too focused on work, whatever it is, because it might get eaten by the snake. All right. You have some very interesting energies coming in here, okay? So we have the Six of Cups. This is like enjoyment, pleasure, happiness. You're feeling yourself at the beginning of the month, and then bam, the tower happens. So there is like a groundbreaking moment, okay? So we're going to see what clarifies it before we talk about it anymore. And the Seven of Swords, I do feel like there is some injustice or an, a truth that's coming out because the 16 comes to a seven, and two sevens for me together represents um, somebody not telling the truth, okay? So in this situation, the tower comes down, right? Something happens, but then something is revealed that's going to have to be handled very delicately, okay? So let's move forward. Let's see what we have here. Let's look at this Eight of Cups. What is Scorpio neglecting? Remember, you have this beautiful energy of the here and now, okay? Focusing on that and being very honest and truthful with how and what you want moving forward. The, ten, the Eight of Cups wants you to know that, um, I guess I got it, the Ten of Wands. You're very, like, you're at this point where you feel like you've been pushing and pushing and pushing. And you're like, is it really worth it? Like, should I keep doing this? Is this going to work? And then you're like, but I have hope and I really want it to work with the Three of Wands. Now, what's interesting is the Ten of Wands is, of course, a Ten. The Seven and Three come to a Ten. So this could be at work also. Like, you might be neglecting some things at work. You're so busy thinking about the future, you're neglecting what's happening right now. Okay, so let's go to this Six of Cups energy, and let's do a beautiful pick a card for that. You know, because they're having a great time on this Six of Cups. Like, there is a whole lot of love and feeling going on right there, okay? So I'm going to pull two cards out. Let's see what we get. Card number one or card number two? Very interesting energy. So for card number one, you get the thinking man. You've been thinking a lot about what makes you happy, what makes you feel good, okay? And we want more of it because we have the clear quartz in our hand. Now, this could also mean that you're thinking about a man that makes you feel good or you're thinking about a woman that makes you feel good. But something's going on here. What is going on? I'm going to pull from the center. So we have the Queen of Pentacles coming out, the Page of Cups, and then the Two of Pentacles. 
Now, this Queen of Cups energy, Queen of Cups, Queen of Pentacles is about investments. We want to birth something new. We want to make something happen. Both of them have something in their hands and they're looking at it, okay? One person's thinking about amplifying and the other person's thinking about investing. So then there's a, like a little offer that you want to make. You want to make a little offer to this queen, okay? And you're like, how can we balance this? How can we make this work? What can we do to move forward? And the energy is quite interesting with this Queen of Pentacles. So let's see what she's very fertile. She's got her coin. You got the other coin. There's an offer being made. Give me some clues on this Queen of Pentacles. What's going on here? So the Queen of Pentacles has the DJ. Hey, DJ, keep playing that song. So there's something about music. Hashtag, this person could be online a lot or you met this person online, okay? And they're very warm and sunny and happy kind of individual. You guys are trying to make things balance, okay? And here's your energy with the bomber jacket, okay, Scorpio? You're trying to come in. You're trying to protect this connection, protect what's going on. But there's something that's been very hard to juggle, okay? So... Let's look at, let's pull another card for the Page of Cups. What is the Page of Cups wanting to offer in this situation? Page of Cups is like, look, I've had my car, my heart, my car broken. My heart broken and I'm afraid to move forward. And so you have two people dealing with heartbreak here and they're like, I don't know. I don't know if I can do this. And they're both juggling like their work life. They're, they're trying to balance things, okay? And this is something that's coming through. It's kind of blocking the pleasure factor. It's kind of blocking the fun that you get to have with each other. And you don't really know how to move forward with this, okay? Now... For card number two, you have that of the woman holding the coin, okay? So this is you focused on your money, focused on your advancements. That's two sixes right there with the six of cups and the 42 comes to two sixes. That energy is going to tell you to focus on your focus on new and exciting things with your intuition, okay? What does your intuition tell you? So let's see what the woman holding the coin says. She don't know what to do. She don't know. She don't know with the seven of cups, okay? Don't you know? No good. All right. And then that leads to the five of cups. Oh, my goodness, Scorpio. What is going on? What is happening to the nine of pentacles? Okay, overall, what do I have here? The Six of Pentacles. So there is a lot with our emotions coming through. When I see the Seven of Cups, it's like making a choice. We got to make a choice. This woman is thinking about where do I invest my coin? What do I do with this? How am I going to trust my intuition with this black cat behind me? She also has a lot of purple on. So this is royalty. This is trusting your third eye. But so afraid to make the wrong decision, right? And here we are. We're looking at all the times we messed up. But we don't see the love right here. We don't see the good things here. So it's back to the drawing board, right? Nine of Pentacles. I'm going to go back to work. I'm going to see what I got to do in order to move forward. So let's get some clarity with the Seven of Cups. What is making it difficult in this decision? Both people are thinking. We have the thinking man and the woman with the coin. They're both holding something, right? So let's see here. Seven of Cups. What do we have? We have information coming in with the rider. Let's see what else we have here. It's just a matter of time with the clock tower. Okay, it's like they're all stuck together. It's like, what's going on here, guys? With the lady, okay? So there is a lady definitely involved. There's something with information coming in. We don't know what that information is about, but we're afraid about this. We're afraid that this person's gonna make the wrong choice, the wrong decision, right? Or you're gonna make the wrong decision. Very interesting. And so as you're looking at it, you're trying to remember the good times. You're trying to remember, oh, we did have good times. We were happy at one time. Things were going well. This job was great, you know, whatever it is. But we're trying to move forward. And I don't know why I went for this deck, but I just did. So we're going to go with it. Six of Cups. What does the Six of Cups want us to know? We're tied up in the past. So some of us really need to make a decision on how we want to move forward. What do we really want? How do we want to make this choice? Okay, pay attention to the fifth and the sixth. So the Page of Pentacles comes out right here. Somebody's definitely going to be getting some information very soon. This page of pentacles is like the perpetual student. We're learning something new, okay? But we're starting off very, like, young-minded or very, um, what is it, naive about it, right? But we're tied up in the past and we want to move past it. And I feel like you want to move past it so fast that you cause the tower to happen. 
Now, in this tower, this is where Tiamat and the Emperor are fighting. And for me, like this, like when I look at this, I feel like heart chakra. Like this is your heart chakra right here, right? And this is your root. And it's trying to protect you and keep you grounded in your heart before there's something that falls apart. But since you're all tied up in this situation, it's like, oh my gosh, how do I move forward? What do I do? I don't know, Scorpio. Hierophant. Whew. Six of Wands, okay, and third card, Six of Pentacles, a lot of Six and the Six of Cups. New love is coming in for you. You're tied to the past, and you have to pay attention to what's coming in, what's being offered to you. So three sixes in your read is significant to you receiving a new offer in love, and this offer is like groundbreaking because it's like, ah! the higher fin this is like higher love this is like um soulmate love this is moving the relationship to the next level and you're not sure that you want to do this and neither are they this is taking a job offer not knowing if this is really the right job offer but you're going to let the tower happen you're going to let you're going to let balls to the wall happen look at you taking a risk what deck do i want to use what deck do i want to use let's use this higher fin what's going on look i got the twitter card soulmate 22 the new moon okay and the selfie okay what's going on here and being very flexible this individual is very flexible with you they deal well with your schedule they're usually online they like to talk a lot you're getting the parrot three twice because you had it in juno and now you have it on the twitter card so this person likes to talk this person is a soulmate you possibly do a lot of things around the moon okay and this person is into makeup okay they take a lot of selfies or you take a lot of selfies there's this energy coming in of like okay how are we going to make this work? How are we going to do this? <sighs> Which leads to the tower. Ah, tower, tower. Now, the one thing I do see is like in this situation, like we're moving forward to something that's a little bit more give and take. Like it's not like you just always giving Scorpio. You're starting to also learn how to take. You're also learning to give and receive. There's information coming in, possibly on the 27th with that new moon. Okay, new moon in Virgo. We're cutting something out. What are we cutting out? A cycle. We are ending a cycle. We are definitely getting rid of a cycle, especially around the 11th with Venus entering into Leo. So there's this energy coming in for you, okay? You're moving forward to more money. You're moving forward to no more abundance, more abundance in love, more abundance in in finances but information is coming in that has to cut off a cycle so Scorpio you're dealing with the cycle that you've been in maybe you find yourself in relationships where you have a tendency to go back to what feels familiar right oh well this is safer for me you're a fixed sign so you do that or this job is safer for me so I'm gonna stay here because it's just much easier that's not gonna work for you this time you have to move forward there's a decision that needs to be made. So let's go to a different oracle deck. Let me move my drink. The drink is getting in the way. I'm getting heartburn, guys. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> and it's about losing control. Like, not in a bad way, but letting your spirit guides lead you. This energy is saying you're out to see. You're out to see what this becomes. You're out to see what's there. You're no longer trying to navigate, trying to force something. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, and we're fine with it. We're okay. We're going to let whatever, let bygones be guy, bygones. We're going to do what's best for us. We're going to speak with truth from our heart. Remember, it's very important that we speak with truth from our heart, okay, because Mayot is there. So very interesting energy coming through with you. You either want to elevate your career or a relationship. It's something of that nature, okay? Now, that leads us to the Seven of Swords. So you might not be fully honest about what it is that you really want. You're holding something back or they're holding something back. So let's work with the Seven of Swords energy. What is going on here with the Seven of Arrows? Seven of Arrows, Seven of Swords. What's going on here? What do we need to know? So now you have like three sevens in a row. So you're definitely birthing something new and exciting, okay? So we have the world. There's the completion of the cycle, right? Look. The world, the moon, and the empress. Oh my God, all majors. Okay, completion, full moon, things being kept, and then the empress. We're creating something new. There's also something about mother energy going on here with the moon by the empress. 
But there is a completion going on. There could be travel with the moon right there. And then here is the king of pentacles, okay? And so you, and the, there's the queen of pentacles. Then we have the world, okay? The queen of pentacles came out over here under the thinking man. So we have two people who are possibly entrepreneurs or two people very focused on their finances, but they're trying to move to the next level, right? They're trying to complete this cycle. They want this to happen. They're almost like soulmate -ish energy, okay? Very interesting. The 21st is going to be important because the world comes down to number 21, okay? And as we're moving through this energy, you're going to start seeing different energies come through for you and that are going to make more sense. And this is like fixed signs, okay? Aquarius, Aquarius, Scorpio, Leo, Taurus, right? It's our fixed signs, but we're completing the cycle. We're completing that. So here you are ready to invest. Here they are ready to invest, okay? Whether this is a business partner or whether this is a relationship, there's something about getting past the heartbreak, getting past the past, moving forward. And there's a little bit of fear about this, okay? Now, three majors at the end of your read is pretty freaking powerful, okay? Because that means by the end of the month, when we have that new moon in Virgo, that energy is going to propel you to the next level. Very interesting. Okay, let's look. Let's look at this energy. Let's... Let's pull on the Empress. What is the Empress about, okay? What does the Empress want Scorpio to know? They're very different from you, okay? So we got the, the Coachella card coming out. Then we have the nail art card. And then you see right here, they have the hashtag and the Facebook, the danger sign, and then the new moon, right? So in this energy, what I pick up is like this one person is very different from you. You know, we had the makeup tutorial. They have the nail art. They're very much different. They like to be um, online. I get a lot of online stuff because of the hashtag and the Facebook, okay? Or maybe you do. I'm telling you, you met this person online and there's something about a tattoo. Maybe you have a tattoo, maybe they have a tattoo, but there's something about that tattoo. And this is a woman who stands up for themselves or a very creative feminine energy that's going to stand up for themselves and they don't care what anybody has to say. Now, with this energy, because they're online all the time, because here's the phone, right? It's like you feel like something's being hidden because of Seven of Swords, but there's a completion coming to that cycle. Let's look at the moon card. What is the moon talking about? What is the moon talking about? The bear, okay, an overbearing situation. The house, what else? And the fish, okay. There's an overbearing situation on the foundation that could be affecting finances, okay? And what's interesting is, I've never looked at it this way, but here is the bear. The bear has the fish in his mouth. He caught it, right? But the fish wants to be free. Somebody might want to be free. They're not sure what's going on. Maybe you're a freelancer. Or you're doing projects on your own, something like that. But there needs to be a foundation, and that's what the moon is trying to show. Is like, where where is this going? What's going on? What are we doing here, okay? Because we're about to complete a cycle and it's important for when we have to complete a cycle, what are we going to do? So what does completing the cycle look like for Scorpio? The Knight of Swords, we're just running in there and we're doing it like, hey, this is going down. This is, it's like a very spontaneous decision that's coming through. Be aware with the Ten of Swords. Is that what you're afraid of? That something's gonna come through and take it away? Seven of Swords again. Um. And then we have Pisces energy here. So this is the energy that I'm feeling. There is a fear that if you take a job or if you take a relationship or if you take something with the double seven of swords and the ten of swords and the nine of swords is that it could be gone tomorrow because it's happened in the past. And so this is where it's going to be important to really speak from your heart and be vulnerable and tell your, your boss, your partner, your friend exactly what you're feeling because this is soulmate energy with the king and the queen of pentacles. Now, being that you have the double seven of swords here. The double seven of swords. How can we work through the double seven of swords for Scorpio? You got a lot of sevens in your read. Taking a chance. Just take a chance. What are you so afraid of? Okay? You've been watching this person or you've been watching this situation. It's worked out. Okay? And it's going to be peaceful. But you're so used to like something blowing up in your face that you're afraid to take this chance. So if you're offered a position, you're offered a project, you're offered a relationship, 
Take a chance. Go for it. You've been watching them. By that new moon on the 27th, you're going to feel ready to make that decision. Okay? And it's going to be a very peaceful decision. Whether you choose to take it or not, it's going to be your choice, but you're moving forward. Very interesting. Let's look at your self-care this month. Take a nap. It's time to rest and relax. Okay? Silence. Rest your mind. There's a lot about rest. Focus on what you've achieved already and stop being so hard on yourself. And friendship. Call a friend. Be a friend. You know, take a time to go hang out with your friends. All right? Now let's close off this message real quick. What do we have here? Express your joy. What makes you happy, Scorpio? Reevaluate your priorities. What else do we have here? Refine your attention. And one more card. Accept disappointments gracefully. Okay? Overall, be true to yourself. Be true to you, boo. Be true to you. What do you want? Be honest. Be truthful. That's what Mayotte wants you to do. Okay? So let's look at your finances. What's going on in our finances for Scorpio? I hate these cards sometimes. They're so hard to shuffle. What's going on for Scorpio? What is the energy for Scorpio? Okay, we have the patriarchy, which is the Hierophant. So you have the Hierophant twice. This is higher learning, higher love, higher situations. This is also the banking when I'm looking at money. Five of Swords, okay? What else is going on financially? Here's the Page of Cups. Okay, let's get one more card. And the Wheel, overall energy at the bottom of the deck is the world. I'm telling you, the 21st is going to be very important for you. This is Jesus. Jesus is coming in to save the day. Hey, hey, hey. All right. So you've gotten the world twice in your read. There's a cycle coming to an end. The number 55 with the patriarch and the five of swords. There's big changes coming in. It might be a small change financially, but it's going to put you on the right path. Okay. It's like when the wheel comes in, it's like, look, no more having to beg. No more having to like do little small jobs. You're going to be moved to something bigger because it's time to move on. You're moving to the next level. So congratulations. Pay attention to the number 555 when it comes to finances. Okay. Let's look at your love. What's going on for Scorpio's love? What does Scorpio got going on over here in their love life? What do they need to know moving forward? Oh, my neck is starting to hurt. One more video and I'm done. Ew. Okay, let's see here. Ooh. There's a trip. Scorpio, what are you sad about? Justice will be served. Yeah. Okay, you've been served. How about that? So you're very stressed out about a situation. You're overthinking it. There's something about a trip with the Nine of Swords and the Ten of Wands. Feels like a very heavy decision. Could be dealing with Aries Leo Sag, or this is your rising, your 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 moon, your rising, or your Venus. Okay. This is also about being very passionate and releasing judgment. Now, we have here the Five of Cups. So there's like something we're healing from. We're like really trying to move forward and we go to the star. So we're like hoping that we're making the right decision. And then we have the Justice card right here saying, look, things are going to get better. Okay. Things are going to be okay. Now, if you're single, we're moving over, we're moving on from a situation in the past. There is a lot of healing going on and almost like a lot of like, releasing energy for you like you're releasing you're trying to let things go you want to move forward you don't want to be full of anxiety anymore you want to be happy okay you're trying to be happy you're trying to move forward get this last card let's give these a good shuffle before we start pulling why do we have anxiety about oh there it is anxiety king of cups okay so we have anxiety about like, am I making the right decision? Am I choosing from my heart? What am I doing? Is this really what I want? King of Wands is saying, look, let's do it. Ace of Swords, right? I think that's what it is. Ace of Swords. This person likes to have fun. They're very passionate. You're very passionate. Let's do it. What does judgment say? Judgment says the Nine of Swords. So we have the Nine of Swords twice. There's a lot of... Um, I don't want to say like mind fuckery, but there's a lot of you in your head or them in their head or you know, like that person's in their head. Like, am I enough? Am I going to be enough in this situation? Are they going to move on from me with the double nine? OK, is this person going to move on and leave me by myself? Ten of Wands. What do we have here? The Ten of Wands right here. The Hermit. 
afraid to be left out, afraid that you're going to see something that you don't want to see. Five of Cups is the Queen of Cups. Look, we have a divine pair here. The King and the Queen of Cups. What are you afraid of? Okay? What are you afraid that you're going to lose? Because the star wants to come in and heal this love situation. And here it is. There's your offer, the Knight of Cups. So part of the healing is going into your emotions because you see how she's she's sitting here. She's making a wish. She's hoping. And then here she is in the water and the Knight of Cups is coming in. That's a beautiful energy coming in right there. Overall energy with justice. What do we have here? Uh, two cards come out. I have the wheel and the magician. You know what? The wheel is a 10, so that's a 1. The magician is a 1, and justice is an 11. So this is an 11, 11. You have a soulmate proposition here. That's what's freaking scaring you. There's two kings in this read. So I do feel like this is about putting your your emotions and your actions into place. Somebody is holding back in a situation. And I want to say that <laughs> you're either dealing with a man. The man has like a beard, okay, a very thick beard. And the woman has a very big bosom, okay, because the man is like buried in her bosom. Like he's like enjoying himself, okay. Now in this situation, and the reason why I say a beard is because there he is right there. There's this, this is something new. This is something new. It's fairly new, but there is a lot of fear, a lot of fear of measuring up and this person leaving or you leaving or somebody from the past coming back and taking that person and leaving you out in the cold. There's that fear right there. OK, and there's a trip. There's a trip. You're like afraid that this person's going to go on a trip with someone or you're going to go on a trip with someone. There's just something really odd about that energy. Then we also have a 10 here and a 10 here. So there's also some work related stuff that's going on into this situation. Now, if you are single, what I'm picking up is let's start putting our focus on our emotions and our actions, adjoining ourselves with people who have the same kind of ideas that we have, freeing ourselves from holding ourselves to these judgments of having to measure up to someone else's um, standards when you are the damn dirty standard, okay? And loving ourselves as we go through that. Let's get some final um some final messages what are some final messages for Scorpio when it comes to love look we have to be strategic again with the 21 my gosh okay be prepared okay there's some going on something's happening that's that tower but it leads to healing it leads to something beautiful okay and we're gonna find our balance and money is going to get better. Sometimes when you align yourself with someone who is for you, like your, your money improves, your energy improves, things like that happen. So pay attention to that. And we're healing. The door to spirit is open. This is like an emotional soul tie relationship. Overall energy, the angel of love. This is a beautiful thing. It's just a matter of a choice on how you're going to move forward. All right, Scorpio. So with that being said, I hope you have a wonderful month. All right. If you're interested in a read, hit me up on my link tree. Let's hang out. Come on over to Instagram. Let's get a reading going. All right. Take care.